Mm. <laughs> Come on, don't talk with your mouth full. <laughs> That's really good. We've got the dumplings with the gravy. And then here we have the pork loin. And here we have the pork spare ribs that have been cooking in the sauerkraut all day. And then here we have the pork roast that has been cooking and making our gravy for us. So the first process that we have is we have our bread process. You can get it. I like to get the Walmart brand bread, French bread. It always seems like it works well. It's lighter in the dumpling. And so I just take the one pound loaf of bread, or actually it's a 14 ounce loaf of bread, and then slice it, and then I bring it home and slice it some more, and then I dry it out in the oven. When you're drying out the bread, if you take a shallow pan, fill it up, put it in the oven for about 250 degrees, for about 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, flip it around, get, let the other stuff get dried out, and then pretty much it's done. And then I just bag it up again and wait and prepare it for the meal. Then the other important thing is the spare ribs. They must be pork spare ribs. There's something in the fat in the pork spare ribs that makes the sauerkraut turn really nice flavor. So I like to use this amount of meat I'm making for 40 people. And you use regular sauerkraut, not the Bavarian. I don't like to use the sauerkraut that has caraway in it. I just like to use the regular sauerkraut. So I like to start by putting a can, a layer of sauerkraut down. So I'll put about two jars of sauerkraut down and then a rack of spare ribs. And then I'll put like three, four jars in there and put another rack of spare ribs and continue however much you want to do. And this, I'm going to put about 12 cans of sauerkraut in there with three racks of ribs. I do not like to cut the ribs up because this simmers all day long. And if you, if you cut it all up, it completely disintegrates. You don't really have any meat left. And so I like to have more hunks of meat. In between each layer of the sauerkraut and meat, I sprinkle with caraway seed. I know that everything is going to start cooking without burning on the bottom because that's one thing you do not want to do is get this to burn on the bottom because your whole entire meal in this pot is ruined then because the whole flavor is going to come through. But you want to make sure that it is going to be continued cooking because this has to simmer for six to seven hours and if it doesn't do that, your meat won't be done and nothing will be flavorful again. So I just kind of, as, as it's heating up, I end up kind of lifting it up, moving the, the waters, the juices, kind of underneath as it's heating up. So I know that it is going to get evenly distributed and going to heat properly. In the oven, I am cooking a pork butt. And with that, you want to get the gravy out of it. So it's very important to keep the juices at all times with it. So I usually use added pork gravy packets, but the, having the meat cook, and then this just falls off the bone, meat, pork, and that's where you get the gravy. And my family likes lots of gravy, so I probably have two to three gallons of gravy. The next part of the process is the pork loin. We have a pork loin here that we have placed the fat side down, seasoned it, and it is gonna be put in the oven. The oven is preheated to 500 degrees. This is going to be cooked at five and a half minutes per pound in the oven at 500 degrees. At the end of that 38 minutes, I'm going to turn the oven off. I am not going to open the door at all, set the timer for another hour with the oven off and do not open the door and let it sit in there for one hour. At the end of that time, bring it out 
put it on the counter, cover it, and let it sit for 10 minutes. And then you can cut it with a fork. We're going to start with the dumpling process. And I put about two and a half bags of the dried dumplings in this bowl. I'm going to sprinkle this with some salt and then I'm going to beat a dozen eggs. I'm going to beat it with about a dozen eggs and then I'm going to pour that over the top of this. And then I'm going to take hot water and moisten all of this so I can start the process of the dumplings. When I'm moistening all this and adding water, I don't always want to make, I want to make sure I don't add too much. So instead of bringing the whole pot over, I'll get a little cup or something and I just bring over little bits at a time. And then I always like to use a bigger fork type of something that I can dig down into it and bring up the middle of the bread. So you can make sure you're mixing it all together. Okay, so I now have the bread moistened enough. Now you see that clearly it has shrunk down a lot, but yet it is still, I mean it is like it is mushy, but yet it is a little bit firm. So you can see that it's going to take a little bit of flour to get it together. Okay, so what I like to do is I just take a little flour and I put it over the area that I'm going to make the dumpling in, bring it up, and add a little bit more flour and then put the dumpling together. This is all real low calorie, right? Absolutely low calorie. The, um, this then, you have to make sure that um, this is firm enough, but yet it's not like a baseball hard. So, and then the trick is to make sure that it is together enough that when it's put in the water, it does not fall apart. So, I always make them up first and then I put them into the water. And um, you can make them any size you want. They boil for 20 minutes. You can take it out of the water and if you cut it open, you're going to see everything is pretty much cooked through. You don't want to have flour um, sitting there. But once it's cut open, you're pretty much done for putting, uh, putting that into the water. Submerge them into the water, and the water should be boiling. Well, they will when the, they all get in here. It will be they'll be covered. Once this comes to another rolling boil, we will time it for 20 minutes. At the end of the 20 minutes, the dumplings will be done, and I will take them off. And then we'll just start with the next batch. And it's always so much fun because they disintegrate. I see what you mean, why well, they would really disintegrate. Yeah, if you didn't flap them over. Yeah. I used to cut them up and then I could never find them. Sure. As we're getting ready for the sauerkraut potato puree, we're finishing up the set, the first set of dumplings. As you can see, the dumplings get quite large in the water. Um, if you made smaller dumplings, they wouldn't get so large. But I don't know why they get so large. They get so large. So you want to make sure that you keep moving them around in the water so they get evenly cooked. In whatever pan you have that it's bringing up to a rolling boil at all times. Because otherwise it's not going to cook evenly. Okay, we're working through the process. We took all the, the spare pork ribs out of the, the sauerkraut and then we're gonna get ready to puree some red potatoes and thicken the sauerkraut with the red potatoes so it no longer is more of a, it's not like a juice, it's more like um, a little thicker sauerkraut with not so much juice going all over. Whatever gadget that you're gonna use to puree your potatoes, um, I, this is not my house, so I'm not sure how this is going to work, but we're going to use it. It's like a bullet. So we're going to just put the potato, cut the potato and put it in here and see if we can get it pureed. Now, puree means it's like um, a thick gravy almost and the potato starch 
will work in the sauerkraut. You kind of want to bring the simmer on the on to the um, sauerkraut when you're adding this to the sauerkraut, so, and then let that simmer for a little while, and then it'll thicken it up. The, the last process, which is the most important process because everybody wants lots of gravy. So after I've combined all the juices and added all the other gravies, I have my, I actually get extra packet of gravy, pork gravies, packets. I add flour to it and I thin it out and then I add it so I can thicken up the gravy. And, um, if you have ever made gravy before, you're just basically making gravy. If, what I do is for every packet, I would say add about a half a cup of, of flour. And then thin it out to whatever you want to make it. If you want a thicker gravy, thinner gravy, that's really up to you. But at this point in time, I'm going to be making it a little bit thicker and if, because I want to use it all. And if I have to thin it out, I'll just add more water to it. Okay, here we are. Getting ready to eat. So everything is ready. So setting it all up. Let me just uh, want to get this ice cube out of the floor. We now have our completed meal. And we've got the dumplings with the gravy. And then here we have the pork loin. And here we have the pork spare ribs that have been cooking in the sauerkraut all day. And then here we have the pork roast that has been cooking and making our gravy for us. And then, of course, our sauerkraut. Hallelujah. Come on in. We're singing the Johnny Appleseed song. Uh, it's real easy to catch on. Okay. Thank God. All right. Oh, the Lord is good to me. And so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need. The sun, the rain, and the apple seed. The Lord is good to me. Amen. 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 Fabulous. Yeah. You'll see what home is ran with either Dan or me. Wow. Yeah. I have that coming. I'm not quite sure. I got a daughter who's now 44. How about you, Australia? Sour crabs. Really good. Really nice. Yeah. What he said. What he said, yeah. Sleep good tonight? So how is it? Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> the pork loin is what you said it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. The meat was good. That was good. Yeah.